Hi everybody, Jude here. I'm in the studio this morning. It's a very rainy, dark, dreary day here in New England. And um, I just thought I'd do a little catch up video, um, let you know what's going on with me. Um, thank you everyone that came to the art sale that I had over on Cindy Lovin's um, channel. Um, Cindy was so nice and pinch hit for me uh, to host at the last minute because I have a laptop that has a very um, <laughs> unpredictable camera and the morning of the sale, the camera would not work. And um, I tried all kinds of things, um, <clears throat> cleaning it out, you know, all kinds of things I did and it would not it was not connecting to the camera. And then what do you know, the next day it connected. So it's it's very temperamental and I couldn't trust it for the art show. So Cindy very graciously agreed to host. So thank you to her. And Elizabeth Cabada was there, of course, selling her beautiful things. And um, <clears throat> I think everyone that came had a good time. And um, there's been some talk about doing another one. I don't know how frequently we would do it. Um, I'm not sure how frequently we all have art pieces to sell um, in that kind of a setting, but um, you know, we'll talk about it. Let us let me know if it was if it's something that you'd like to see happen more regularly: art sales versus the jewelry sales that we're all used to. Um, the jewelry sales are wonderful, but a lot of us do other things besides jewelry, so. We thought maybe we'd highlight some of those things. Um, that being said, I want to show you, I finished up the last of the uh, shakers for this season. This is a little elf. <laughs> and this is a little snowman. And this is a little king. Yeah, so they're all decked out and ready for the holiday season. <clears throat> I had a big order, guys, from that um, art sale of Elfies. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> that came in after the sale had closed, um, after the video had closed. And um, so I was fast and furiously getting together these Elfies and um, making replacement else for the ones I had sold and um I I'm done with those for the season um I have had more requests um but there comes a point where um when you're making one of a kind things um you like them to be one of a kind things and if I get into a mass production mode um then each one loses. It's not that they're not original, but it's 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 a different feel when I'm making them. And I like to make them in such a way that they kind of reveal their personalities to me as I'm sculpting them. And uh, <clears throat> if, I, if I have to produce a whole bunch of them at once, um, fast and furiously, you know, to have enough uh, to sell, which is why I don't take them. I've, I've been asked to take them to a larger venue to sell, um, a place that gets, you know, thousands of, of people going by your booth. And I just don't want to sit here all year long and make nothing but shakers. And so even though I love them and I, I really enjoy my time making them, I don't want to make them in that way. And so I've always declined, those offers. Um, yeah, so uh, I will make more next year. So if you're someone who feels like you'd like one next year when the new batch comes around, then please, um, you know, let me know. And, and I'm making a list, you know, <laughs> of people who are requesting them. So <clears throat> anyway, that's that on the shakers. Um, I've been making... Um, tags uh you know cindy makes tags uh cindy levin makes tags all the time and i had a lot of uh painted papers that uh, i could make scraps and bits and bobs out of so i've been making tags as well 
And then um, I love to play with fibers in my art too. So that's one of the things I like with the with the shakers. I really enjoy choosing their uh, fibers and things that are going each one. Um, <clears throat> so I've been doing that. And um, yeah, um, the other big thing I have coming up is um, <clears throat> I have been attending a group on Facebook called um, Free Go Live Auctions. It used to be a bigger group with a different name. <clears throat> but what happened was um, Facebook um, decided that if you were going to be, um, I, I don't know all the, I don't know all the knit and grit of it, but it's something about dividing the line between professional auctioneers who have a license and just the rest of us <laughs> who have a few things sitting around that, that we want to sell. Um, and both are fine, but they had to make a distinction. And so now there's a group called um, Free Free Go Live Auctions on Facebook. And like with other Facebook groups, it doesn't cost anything to join. All you, got, all you have to do really is to just agree to be a nice person when you go in there, right? Anyway. I have been encouraged <laughs> by a couple of friends on there to do a live auction. And I've decided to uh, bite the bullet and do that. So on Saturday, and I'm sorry if this is um, doubling over, you know, on top of somebody else's auction. But the spaces that were left, it's it's a really popular group. And the spaces that were left were extremely minimal. So I was lucky to get any date at all. Um, <clears throat> so my auction is Saturday, December 3rd from 2 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, hopefully I'll have enough stuff to run from 2 to 5 p.m. I think I do. Um, and it will be it's vintage that's that's the point of the group so your items have to be vintage um it's not an art sale well it, there could be art but it would have to be vintage art so it wouldn't be it wouldn't be you know the stuff that i sold at the art sale um <clears throat> so i have you know uh vintage toys and vintage oddities and um <coughs> I have some vintage sterling and um, just all kinds of little bits and bobs, uh, Christmas uh, jewelry and um, yeah, just a lot of different things. Uh, ephemera. Um, I have a, a beautiful um, antique widow's jacket that is adorned in beautiful hundreds and well, thousands, really, of black beads, um, which is, it's just beautiful. And uh, that's going to go up and uh, lots of different things. So I hope that you'll take the time to come on over to Facebook and join me over there. Um, <clears throat> if I already have your information, that's great. You know, I, I'll keep it. And if I don't and you want to email me, hi, sweetie, my puppy's here, at Jude Direct at gmail.com, all lowercase letters, Jude, direct, just like this channel, at gmail.com, and uh, give me your information. You know how it goes, your name, your address, your email, um, because those auctions run through PayPal as well. Then, uh, you know, you'll be free to bid uh, on December 3rd, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And let's see, what else is going on? Um... I guess that's all I really have to to talk to you about right now. Um, oh, I did just finish this little project. I'll show you. Um, I've been working on this for a while. This is a vintage Rolodex. And uh, for those of you that are too young to know what a Rolodex is, <laughs> you can put uh, names and addresses of people or... Um, or um, 
your business cards or whatever in here and you could find people fast in a business office. Um, and this one I've taken all of my art prints, uh, mono printing, and oh, that's the other thing I want to talk to you about, and put them on the little sheets and you spin it around and every every little sheet has a quote and the quotes that I've chosen are about art. Um, Life beats down and crushes the soul and art reminds you that you have one, Stella Adler. Um, and so they all have little quotes um, on them and I can come in here in the morning and um, flip it around and um, and get some little artistic inspiration for the day. So that's been fun. That's been a really fun project. Um, <clears throat> so two, two things I wanted to say. One was about printing there's some confusion that came up at the art sale <clears throat> after the art sale I wish I had known it was there before the art sale but this confusion um when I say or when we say the word print um because sometimes a person will make a piece of art as you know and then they'll go to a, um either they'll have the equipment to do it themselves at home or they'll go to a professional place and they'll have prints made, duplicates made of that original piece of art. Okay. So you would either purchase from them the original, which is usually much more expensive, or you would, or you could for a much less expense, purchase a print, a copy of that original art. Um, on heavy card stock usually, uh, or some kind of nice paper. Um, well, you know, when we talk about mono prints, like the ones I had at the art sale, what we're talking about there is something totally different. It's not a copy. It is the original piece of art. The reason that we've called it a print or that they are called a print is because we have a plate made of gelatin it's a rectangular I can't reach mine right now otherwise I'd show you it's a rectangular plate uh, a gelatin plate which you can either make them at home or now you can purchase them um, and you using paint and a roller um, and uh, all kinds of uh, texture tools and things. You can create images um, on on the plate and then you can lift those images off the plate with a piece of paper. And then that becomes your print. And you only get one <laughs> and you'll never get a second one that is identical, trust me. I have spent hours trying to duplicate my own work on the plate more than once. And they always have, and that's the charm of them, they always have a little bit of a difference. Even with the same paint, the same technique, the same tools, everything, it's always unique uh, with a mono print, which is part of its charm. But it's also the thing that makes it a one of a kind. You know, if I sell you a piece of artwork that was made by um, mono printing on the jelly plate you'll never find another one of those anywhere ever in the planet throughout history it is 100 percent unique because it you can't you cannot duplicate it i cannot duplicate it the only way it would be duplicated would be if somebody took a photo of it and then printed out copies of it but you would never get another one with the paint right on the paper that you can feel and see. Um, it would be completely unique. So when we say prints, we're not talking about, in that case, like we were at the art show, we're not talking about uh, prints as in duplicates. <clears throat> there were some prints sold at the art show. Uh, Elizabeth had some prints that were duplicates of collage work that she had done. She also said she was willing to sell the original and it was beautiful. Um, and she told everyone, these are prints, these are duplicates of the original. That was different than what I had offered that day. And I'm trying to think if Cindy offered some that day too. Uh, original monoprinting is, is something totally different. Um, 
So, yeah. So, I just wanted to clear that up. Also, um, I wanted to ask, and you can give me feedback in the comments below. Would anybody be interested in an online class of um, jelly printing? Uh, which is with the mono printing with the, with the jelly plate, mono printing, uh, altered books, um, journal making. I could even do shaker making. Um, you know, the tags, I'm sure the others would be open to that too. Um, well, I say I'm sure I haven't asked them, but <laughs> I'd like to give people's feedback. Um, if a workshop or class, um, you know, we could even, you know, like Cindy and Elizabeth and I all do mono printing. So we could even do, you know, let me know, ladies, if you're open to this idea or not. But we could even do um, a session where each one of us did something. You know, but I just wanted to put the feelers out there. I'm kind of getting the cart before the horse um, and see if anyone's interested in some sort of art lesson. You know, it doesn't have to be a complicated one. It doesn't have to be um, portraitures, you know. <laughs> um, I mean, I can teach you how to draw a face, but, you know, um, that would be something that would take more than... It's going to take you more than an hour to really learn how to, to do a face correctly, you know. Um, but short little workshops, if anyone's interested um, in any any subject, throw them out there. Throw them in the comments. And I'm sure, you know, people will read them. And if somebody knows how to do something that you're looking to know how to do, um, you know, we can get the word out about that. Um but, you know, I figured the season of winter's coming and people are going to be, uh, you know, a little more at home as we tend to hunker down and and uh, stay off the roads, I hope, when it's slick. And so uh, maybe people are going to be looking for, for projects to do and things to do. So let me know and, um, and we'll take it from there. I also wanted to say that those of you that purchased the little gingerbread houses for me, the little miniature gingerbread houses, um, I had uh, five of them that I made for myself, and I punched with a with a hole punch um, a little round hole in the back wall of them, and I've stuck little twinkle lights in there, you know, the kind that don't really heat up. Uh, I've stuck little twinkle lights in the back and the little gingerbread houses illuminate and they are adorable that way. So if you got one and you want to try, you know, putting that on um, your Christmas tree, if you don't want to do it with a string, uh, you could just um, poke a little, you know, gently because you don't want to crush the whole thing, but a little round hole in the back and... Uh, slide it on over one of your twinkle lights and it will glow on your tree. It'll look really cute. So, um, yeah. Anyway. All right. I've rambled about all kinds of things. So I'm going to let you go and I'm going to get back to work here in the studio and I will see you all soon. Bye.